Welcome. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you the major scale guitar patterns and how to connect scale shapes so you can play in any key all over the fretboard. I'm Jared Borkowski from SoundGuitarLessons.com and I teach musicianship skills as the common thread between all styles of guitar so we can become better overall musicians with more creative control regardless of the genre that we're interested in. If that sounds up your alley, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a lesson. I'm still just getting this channel started so every little bit of support means a ton. Okay, let's get into the lesson. We're going to talk about how to play in the same key all over the fretboard using the five major scale guitar patterns. Now, these are sometimes called scale patterns, sometimes called scale shapes, and sometimes called scale forms. They are all the same thing. If I say any of those, that I'm using them interchangeably. Even in the title, I say patterns and shapes. I actually like saying forms the most, but the most common way to call them is patterns, so you'll hear me use that language quite a bit. A really important part of this is we're going to talk about how to see those scale forms, how to view them, how to look at them, how to find them, what to kind of focus on within those. Now, these shapes, these scale forms, these you can find these diagrams everywhere, all over the place. Easy search. This is probably like the 10 millionth video on YouTube about these exact same five scale forms. But the big thing that I kind of add to this is, is really how to see it, what we're kind of I often call it anchoring our view, what we're anchoring our view on so we can see that shape come alive, be seeable on the fretboard, have our hands know it. And then I'll give you a handy exercise for how to connect those five scale shapes all over the fretboard uh, in a way where we can really see it with clarity and not just see one shape to the next to the next. So again, how we're seeing it is really important and definitely how we're practicing it is really important. So that's what we're going to go over. After all that info, I have two bonus tips to give you for what might be next for you. One of them is how to turn all of these into the natural minor scale. The other one is how to turn all of these into the pentatonic scale, so you have a lot more flavor and color to play with. So make sure you stick around to the end of the lesson for those extra tips. Okay, let's jump into the main lesson. So this is kind of a follow-up lesson because I posted a video a while ago about how to master major scales. And that video was trying to be a little different than how scales are so often presented, which is kind of what I'm going to do in this video, kind of the normal way of presenting scales. But uh, the normal way would be, okay, let's take a key, like we're going to take C major and show five scale forms in that key all the way up the neck. But I'm going to show you kind of how I think you should see it and how I think you should practice it. Now, that other video was about really mastering major scales and any scale, but I was using major scales, by seeing the root in a certain place, seeing the scale built off of that root, and being able to play in any key in any position, right? So if you're anywhere on the guitar, you can see the root that you need to play that key, and then the scale that's needed out of the five becomes available to our view by having by practicing it in a certain way. So definitely check out that video for that information. This one should stand on its own, but check that out for a really serious practice on switching keys in the same position. And you have to know your major skills super well to be able to do that. So I have really specific exercises for that. So I had a friend post a comment on that video that said, okay, I'm getting it. I'm getting how to play scales in one position, switching the key, seeing the root, which is freaking awesome because that's really hard to do. That's amazing practice to be able to do that. And they said, but what about if I want to play in, in one key? What if I want to find the five scale forms of one key all over the fretboard? Now that's kind of what I was trying to avoid a little bit or not avoid, but uh, that's just such the common way that this is presented. And I realized, oh, I really do need to put, post a video just about that, about the five scale forms in one key on the fretboard, because I do have specific ways that I think are important for how we practice that and how we view that and specifically connecting the shapes, because that's the thing that comes up so often. Once we're practicing the five scale forms, we're thinking, all right, well, how do I feel like I can flow between them? So that is what this is about. So I'm going to show you these five scale form diagrams, but this is kind of something you should already have known or seen. If you're seeing this for the first time, um, it might be not the best introduction, but know that these are physical scale shapes, scale forms, scale patterns on the guitar to be able to play in a key. Um, I'm assuming a lot of you have seen these before because again, they're everywhere. So I'm just giving my two cents on how to work on them, how to view them on the fretboard and connect between them. 
If you haven't seen these before, if this is totally new to you, then definitely go check out that other video I made about mastering scale shapes. And these two videos will complement each other very well. So first, let's just demonstrate through the five scale patterns, scale shapes, scale forms in the key of C. And this is the way I recommend doing it. You want to find the root, your lowest root in that form of the major scale, and then play it from that root all the way up back down to that root below and back up. And you'll see what I mean, because I'm going to do all five of them that way. So we're starting on C right here. And then we're going to go up one, two, 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 two. back down and then land on that root again, do, 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 and then back up. So we're focusing so much on that root. Okay, I'll do that again. Now, sometimes I won't stop that first time around. I'll stop in different places for different exercises. So this one actually should be. That's actually what I want. So here's the next scale form. Okay, here's the next scale form. This one will be called E form. Okay, here's the next scale form. The root is here. This one is the least familiar and comfortable for a lot of people because the root is on the fourth string and it's weirder to see. And we're so used to looking at things off the sixth string or fifth string. So. Okay, and then the final scale form. Okay, so the important thing here is that I'm starting on the lowest root, so I'm seeing that, having to identify it, play the whole scale above it, come back down, pass right through, so not the way I did it the first time, but pass right through, play everything below it, and then come back and land on it. So seeing the scale off of that root is the crucial thing, and practicing it that way is important as well, because we're going to use this scale form in the future for many other things, including modes. I did a video on modes as well, so check that out, and I will put a link below. And so that way of practicing it is really important. That's the way of doing all five in one key, in key of C in this case. So let's just quickly say you want to do another key. So let's, and we just want to do that same thing in another key. So let's say E flat, okay? So you, the first thing you want to do is find all of those instances of E flat that are going to build the scale from. So to see the full view, don't start playing those scales until you map out where those E flats are. So do whatever you need to to find those. So I don't care if, if you know them right off the bat, obviously great. If it takes a bit to count them, fine. If you got to take an hour to find them, also fine, because that is what it takes to eventually know it. So this whole thing about, oh, I got to find notes. I have to count and find notes. Appreciate that as part of your practice, and it's really, really good practice. So we have to identify and find those E flats. Okay. Okay, here's one of them here. Now I'm just going to look around and say, all right, where else do I have an E flat? Okay, there's one here. Now for now, I'm going to suggest don't include open strings in your situation. Uh, certainly you can, but just for this exercise and what I'm going to show you, I'm not going to do that. So in this scale form here, you'd have to think, all right, here's an E flat. What scale form would be a part of that? And you could look at the diagrams if you want, or think about all five of them, whatever you need, and think, okay, which of the five are, are, is part of that? Well, okay, there's that one with the root on the fourth string. It's the only one with the root on the fourth string. Well, other ones have a root on the fourth string, but they have a lower root. So it's the only one where the lowest root is on the fourth string. Okay, so we're gonna find that and say, okay, we see that shape has a open string next to it. We don't, we don't want that. So this is our lowest down to the left of the neck E flat. So we wanna think, okay, E flat has a scale form off of this. Now here's an interesting tidbit. Every root that you find, and anywhere, not just these lowest roots, Every root you find has two scale forms that you can play off of it because there's going to be one on your left side over this way. There's going to be a scale form built off of the other side of it on your right side. So basically there'll be, you'll have your pinky on the root on this C form. That same root though is your lowest root for what we can call the A form. These, these forms, A form, uh, C form, are coming from the cage system. I don't really think of it as cage system, but it's their nice labeling. It's a nice labeling system for these, so I'll often refer to them as that. So Okay, 
that one root had a scale form off to this side and it had a scale form off to this side. Yeah, there's some notes overlapping and there's some notes on the left side of that root. But you see what I mean? Every root doesn't just have one, it's actually gonna have two that you can play off of it. So here we have our lowest root on the fifth string and our other lowest root on the fifth string. So think of it this way, here's a cool breakdown. You have a fifth string, we'll say sixth string root, and you have two scale forms off of it. Okay, cool, you have one to the left and one to the right. So two scale forms off of your sixth string root, and you have two scale forms off of your fifth string root. That's four out of the five. And then you just have one scale form that the lowest note of which, the root being the lowest note is on the fourth string. It's the only one that, that has that. So that's kind of a nice thing to remember. Find your root. So in, with any key, like we're doing here, find your root on the sixth string and the fifth string and the fourth string. That's it. That's what you got to do. And then you know you have two scale forms on the sixth string and two scale forms on the fifth string and one scale form off the fourth string. So continuing with E flat, here we go. Found the fifth string. I'm starting you know, furthest this way on the neck and then working up this way, but you can do it however you want. But I think it's a good way to, to go about it. So you're not playing the same five scale shapes in the same order every time. So in E flat, we have a scale form with the pinky here, a scale form with the middle finger here, a scale form sixth string here. And there's a scale form off to this side and then scale form off to the other side. So, and then there's gonna be a fourth string root that's up here. Okay, so yeah, this is this is this is my take on it where it should it's supposed to be helpful for let's say you've practiced those scale forms physically up and down before if you've seen them and if you haven't you can start practicing them that way but again this is how to see it and kind of clarify the fretboard let's do one other key let's do the key of a we have to find our sixth string root and then we know there's going to be two scale forms off there fifth string root we know there's going to be two scale forms off there and fourth string root we know there's going to be one scale form off that so Let's go ahead and do that. Here's one of the scale forms off the sixth string. Here's the other scale form off the sixth string. Here is, I'm gonna to jump to the fourth string. Here's the one scale form off the fourth string. And here is the scale form with the pinky starting on the fifth string. And then the last scale form of the five where the middle finger starts on the fifth string. Hopefully you see how this is a little different, right? If you've practiced these shapes before, and again, if you haven't, it's fine to just physically practice the playing them up and down even from the lowest note, but that is usually how people try to internalize them. They're thinking, okay, here's one of my scale forms. I'm gonna go for this, but I'm having you find the root. Now the, the fourth string root one is a great example because it's just, if we play all the way down here, we're not seeing that the root is here. So this is really crucial. And it's really crucial for eventually having a lot more understanding of what's going on in music in general, what's happening with chord tones, what's happening with theory, voice leading, melodic writing, all of that stuff. If that's my root of my scale and I'm seeing it that way, I can start to see there's my third. I can start to see there's my seven and there's another root because it's an octave away and stuff like that. All stuff I'm gonna talk about in general, but not the focus of this particular lesson, but hopefully that's seeming helpful as a process for how to do that. Of course, let me know if you have questions anytime. So make sure that you can go up and down the scales in that way, finding any key that you want, all five of them. That's a ton of work right there, but I'm gonna give you two other exercises. One of them is make sure you can also play up one scale and down the next. That's very different because I'm not having you start on the root now, and that's good, but you wanna start on the root originally so you're forced to see that as the basis of the whole thing. And then it's very, very powerful to see that root as the basis of the whole thing and not necessarily need to be playing it to see the structure off of it. So back to the key of C for a second. If we play up this scale form. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, now up there, and then I want to have you go up that scale form and down the next one. So you have to shift over and think, okay, I'm gonna go down the next scale form. Well, I'm still seeing my whole scale form off of this root here. I'm still seeing it there, whether I'm gonna play that note or not, doesn't matter. So I'm gonna go. 
it's okay if you need to pause. And I was saying, okay, what's my next one? There's that rooted C. Okay, I want to see that whole scale form off of there. And then play downward. Okay, now I'm saying, okay, there's my next root. And I'm going to play that scale form that's next along the neck. Okay, I played that. Now where is my next scale? Well, I'm looking at those roots. Fourth string root C and I'm going to jump up and play that scale form. So I'm seeing the whole scale form for sure, but I know that I'm anchoring it off of this root. I'm not just seeing it as this vague kind of physical shape thing. Okay, I'm really seeing it off this root. When roots change later, and we'll talk about this at the bonus tip at the end about how to turn it into other types of scales, quick little tip at the end. Um, when roots change later, you'll be used to doing that, and that's going to be important. Otherwise, we're just like, all right, seven notes, got it, fingers playing it, got it. You know, not really hearing it as a certain kind of tonality, and we're trying to do that. Okay, so I keep interrupting myself, but let's go onward. I went down this, and now I'm going to go up, and I'm seeing the next root where C is, and then I shift up, and then I come down. Now, if you're on a nylon string guitar, you're not going to reach that high at all. No problem. Just go as high as comfortable on any guitar and then back down, going up one, down the next, up one, down the next, that kind of thing. Okay. I'm going to start on the lowest note of the form. I'm still seeing this root though. Dude. how I landed on that root, my ear wanted it, and also I just see it because I'm thinking off of that root. So it wasn't just this uh, kind of uh, ambiguous sound. And also I came down on the scale shape that I started on, an octave up, that I went up on, which is kind of nice to get that view on it. So uh, that's another way I want you to try to work on, on these scales. Okay, I know I'm giving you a lot here, but here's the next exercise because I want to, sh to I know that connecting the shapes is the, is the next thing that is kind of like, uh, how do I do that? We did that a little bit with, with moving uh, up one, down the next, and you're seeing the roots in their spots. But here's a great exercise, super fun. What I want you to do is play eight notes from each scale form. This is out of time, but you can kind of think of it as like, if you can end up doing it fast enough, you could do it as constant quarter notes, constant eighth notes, something like that. But eight notes, a count of eight notes. And then after eight notes, you shift to the next scale form over. Make sure you're seeing off of the roots, even if you never play those roots, okay? So just gonna do C major scale again. I'm thinking off this root, and I'm kind of seeing the scale form off of that. And I'm gonna play eight notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cool. Now I'm gonna switch my view over to this root, see that whole scale form, and play eight notes in that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm just playing whatever notes within the within the scale. You can try to follow your ear, make some melodies, whatever you want. Just make sure you're just playing eight notes in that scale form. Now my view switches to same root, but this other scale form that's off of that root. Okay. Notice how I'm climbing up the neck. Do do do. Just went down the scale that time. Great. Now I'm switching my view over to this root on the fourth string, and I'm gonna shift. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I'm switching my view over to this here and the scale from off that. Now I talk about the root view being off of those lowest roots. Once you get used to it and you're just able to see the whole thing, that might feel a little bit less like you think of that root first. You're just kind of seeing it all. Fine, but, but if you ever lose track of where the root is, you've gone off track somehow. If you ever just see the physical shape and not where the root is, then you need to focus back on the root. So I kind of see the root and all of it all at once, but also I'm seeing where the third is and where and what the six is and what the four is in different places, but that's because of other types of exercises where we work on chord tones and stuff like that. For now, um, I hope that this is making sense and it should be super, super challenging. Let it be. I know this, this is a lot of exercises here, let it be super hard. If you find that thing that's hard, this is my favorite thing. If you find that thing that's hard, you have found the thing to practice that's going to make you the most progress, the most bang for your buck, if you will, of your practice time, right? So don't shoot for the easy things. And, and it can't be too hard either. But like when we're like, 
when we're just feeling like, ah, 10 minutes of this is my brain is tired. That's, that's amazing practice, right? So just like exercise, right? If you take a nice little light walk, you're not going to increase your fitness necessarily. It's still good to move, but you know, if you want to get that heart rate up, you got to do something else that your that your body's not conditioned to do as much. Same thing with our focusing, our learning on practicing. So, okay, so um, one and two and three and four and I sometimes do that if I'm thinking of it as eighth notes. So my eight notes will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one and two and three and four and. So um, cool. So I moved around. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna go up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 Look at that. Just climbing down the neck, connecting the scale forms. So. Um, yes, I did it quickly and I did it in time there and my view had to shift exact. I promise you I was seeing it I was able to do it because of exactly what I'm telling you about seeing the root and then seeing that scale form around it and Not losing track of that at any time. Let it be slow. Let yourself stop scratch your head find it. That's awesome practice All right The last thing I want to suggest that you do is just try to play along one string But still seeing those scale forms. So if I play on the third string seeing off of this scale form and I just get those notes on that one string. So I'm gonna move up to this other scale form. I'm really still seeing it off that root and that all those available notes, okay? Here's that next scale form, but I'm just on one string, just on one string, my kind of root I'm anchoring off of change. Otherwise you get lost and you lose view. The typical thing that is done is that we'll think from where I was, what's connected over? From where I was, can I be used to, can I create a habit of knowing what's next? That's what I call maze view. You just turn and you can see, all right, you turn next, you just see one hallway at a time, right? We want the bird's eye view. We want to have control over seeing every nook and cranny all at once, no matter where you're playing, no matter what corner you're in of it, okay? Okay. It's fun. When I'm playing here, I'm in this world, even if it's very briefly. So I can any time switch along one string because I'm seeing that whole thing. So I might go switching on that string. Right? Okay, let me know if you have any questions, of course. Okay, let's do a quick recap before I give you the two extra tips for helping you with the challenges that you might be facing next after this stuff. One, know your scale forms. Just the five physical scale forms, they're everywhere. Just work on those, know those, they're important. It's how we can play in any key, in any position on the guitar. Two, check out my video on mastering scale forms where we have to change keys within the same position to master them link below. Three, know how to see your roots in those scale forms. So you are seeing the lowest root in that scale form and basing the whole scale form off of that. Four, to really ingrain seeing that, practice it by playing off of that lowest root all the way up in that scale position, back down below that root, and then landing back on it like I demonstrated earlier. Five, remember that you just need to find your root on the sixth string fifth string and fourth string, and that you have two scale forms off the sixth string, two scale forms off the fifth string, and one off the fourth string. Six, am I on six? S recap item six, be able to play your scale, those scale forms up one and down the next, still seeing off of the root. Seven, the exercise where you play eight notes in one scale form, shift your view to the next one, play eight notes in the next scale form, and connect between them that way. Eight. Play on one string, also still seeing the full scale form based off of that root, switching between them, playing one string at a time. Nine, make sure you do all that stuff, any of that stuff in various keys. The more keys, the better. So you don't get used to just how it feels, how it looks, how it sounds, all that in one place. Do it in different keys. I think that summarizes everything. 
Okay, bonus time, two bonus items. One, you can make all of these scale forms. Right now we're doing major and we're thinking off the root, which is what makes them major. Without that, they're just collection of seven notes. What are they? Well, we don't know because they can be a lot of things. We're making them the major scale by thinking of that root. So a mode is when you think of treat a scale with the root being a different note out of those seven. So we're we're treating it as the major scale. If you choose another one, it's a mode of the scale. I did a video on modes and how to play them, practice them, see them. See the link below for that video on modes. I think it's a good one. So the thing is, the natural minor scale is one of the modes. So if you take the sixth note of the scale, treat it as the root, see it as the root, play it as the root, do all that stuff I just talked about, but with the sixth note of the scale as the main note, you have your minor scale. You have your natural minor scale. If you can see it that way, you then have all your minor scales. It definitely takes the practice to practice it individually. You don't just suddenly have all the modes because we know the physical shapes. It does not work that way. You have to, it can feel like a totally different scale. I mean, it is really, even though it's those same seven notes. So if I take, let's take uh, this one here. We did this as major, C major. You can hear it. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, or one, seven, six. There's six, there's my lowest six. If I do this off of that. Sounds minor. Check out the modes video for more on that, but turning the six into the root, you have all your minor scales. To turn them into pentatonic scales, it means you just have five notes instead of seven notes. You need to take away the seven and you need to take away the four. That takes away the sound of this, takes away the tritone, the most dissonant interval in, in that uh, whole diatonic structure, and you get something that is much more consonant. And if you practice that, If you practice those things, just like I talked about, any of the ways that I talk about practicing something, you can apply it to something else. Pentatonic scale is just kind of a inherently more melodic kind of tasty uh, scale totally on its own. If you just play it up and down, it sounds pretty, pretty cool and melodic. Whereas the major scale just sounds like a major scale when you play it up and down. So take away the seven, take away the four. That is the way to do it. Rather than looking up your physical diagrams of that, take the time to really see how if you take away something and practice it that way, then you get it. So pentatonic scale, take away the seven, take away the four. You get rid of this interval. You get that sound. Okay, that's it for this lesson. Wow, I am not good at making these lesson videos short and concise and snappy. And uh, I want to make, I want them to be as helpful as possible for you. I just get carried away. I get excited. I want to show you another way to look at it, another exercise, another way to practice it and, and elaborate on things. So I hope that it's effective. Um, I will, I'm going to try to make them a little tighter, but you know, I'm having fun and I, and I hope that you're finding it helpful because that is the entire reason I am doing this. One last thing, and that is that I want you to write your number one takeaway in the comments below. Writing something down really helps us internalize it better and remember it and process it and get the most out of it. So I know there was a lot here. So take your number one thing and tell me in the comments below. And it's not just for me. It really helps other people out too to see what others are writing and learning. So I hope to hear from you there and I'll see you in another lesson next time and happy practicing.